Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. How many, of you got to be, how many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Yeah, get excited, right? Excited. Thank you, Pastor Matt, Pastor Sean, uh, Pastor Matt, for the opportunity to minister this morning. I, I don't take that lightly, but also thank you for, for trusting me. And I thank you, Pastor Sean and uh, Caleb, for all that you guys did over the last couple weeks uh, for Easter and all that. Did, didn't they do a great job? Not only them, but all of our servant leaders did a great job, too, to put on a bunch of stuff. And it's all because we just want to show the love of God, not only to us as a family, but we want to show it to them out there. Because that's, that's who's watching, and that's who, who we do a lot of this for, is because God so loved us that he gave that we so love that we give of everything we have. Amen? Amen. And that's, not, that's one of our values, but no truer than your pastor. Your pastor, uh, Matt McDonald, is always giving. He's always there. Whether it's an encouraging word, whether it's being goofy when you, you really don't feel like laughing, don't want to laugh, and it makes you madder when he does something goofy, but then at the end you laugh because that's just Pastor Matt loving on you. Amen? So praise God. Well, my name is Matthew Whalen. I'm one of the elders here uh, at Common Ground Church and um, one of our servant leaders, so just honored to be up here this morning. Uh, we're going to get right into it. We've got a, lot, a long way to go, but we'll get there eventually. And if we don't, we'll get as far as we can because that's as far as we need it to go. Amen? Amen. Amen. Say this. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Why? Why? You thought I was going to say it for you, right? <laughs> thought I was going to do it for you. See, that's the problem with church too many times. We rely on the leaders to do everything for us, and we just do what they tell us to do. When in turn, we need to be plugged in ourselves and say, I know why I'm blessed. See, say this, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm not running from the enemy. The enemy's running from me. I'm not running from my circumstances. I'm standing on his word and my circumstances are fleeing. I don't have depression. Depression's running from me. That's why you're blessed. The Bible says it this way. I wasn't going to go here, but this is where we're going. It says it in Deuteronomy 28. So if you have a pen and a pad, write it down because it's not going to be up there. See? We'll give you a little bit, but guess what? you got to do your part. Just like not one of you finished out the saying, I'm blessed. I know it. Do you know it? Our servant leaders know it. They said it this morning out in the, in the hall. So. But let me just read something to you. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 says this. Now it shall come to pass that if you diligently... Obey the voice of the Lord your God. Diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to do everything you observe carefully, all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the other nations. Your God will set you high above any circumstance. Your God will set you high above any situation. Your God will set you high above any tribulation, any trial. Your God will set you above that. Why? Because you diligently obey the voice of, the God, of your God, whether you want to, whether you feel like it. Why? Because you know that's the only way you're going to make it. It's the only way you can be set above. He says, and these things and all these blessings... Like being blessed, don't we? We love being blessed. Don't like doing the things we have to do in order to be blessed, like obey. How many of you like that word obey? I think it's even in some, they still say that in marriage vows, you will obey. I don't think we, we didn't put that in ours, right? Like you, will, you have to obey me. And I took out the I have to obey you. No. We walk in love with each other. And walking in love requires sacrifice. So these blessings shall come upon you. Blessed shall you be in the city. Say, blessed shall I be in the city. Blessed shall I be in my job. Blessed shall I be at the grocery store. Blessed shall I be in my car. Blessed shall I be when I come. Blessed will I be when I, blessed will I, be when I go. And you don't want it to be others will be blessed when you go like, oh, praise God. He's out of here. I'm blessed now that he's gone. No, that's not what you want. Amen? Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Mm, the produce of the ground and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Basically, what's he saying? We don't, I mean, I don't know if there's any farmers in here, maybe, anybody with horses, but we don't, what he's basically saying is best shall you be when you go to work. Everything you put your hand to will prosper. Doesn't always mean materially either. 
means you can be happy when you go to work. You can be blessed when you go to work. You can be blessed when you're out there working in the field. You can be blessed. All these things. And guess what? He said, your fruit will increase. And that's just not fruit tangible. That's fruit on the inside of you. Build character, build patience. See, there's a lot of things that are gifts of God, but then there are character traits that we have to develop. You know patience is a character trait you have to develop? The Apostle Paul talks a lot about patience. And he doesn't say, call Pastor Matt and Pastor Sean and the elders and have them pray for you that you receive patience. No, that's not how it works. Patience has to be built on the inside of you. Now the Holy Spirit is your helper. And he is here to help us in those areas where we need to develop our character to get it to where God wants it to be. See, we're not perfect, but we're growing. And the Holy Spirit helps you get there. He helps you grow in those areas. So yeah, patience. And some people say, well, Pastor Matt, you're just lucky, man. You're just, you're just born with patience. No. Maybe it has to do with the way he was raised. Maybe if you're a middle child, you got a lot of patience. Why? Because the oldest child always gets stuff. You're there, and then you got the baby. And you're just there waiting, right? Well, you just develop patience in another area. But you know what? They probably have other character traits that they need to develop in. You can't just say, well, you know... I'm just from New York. It's just how New Yorkers are. <laughs> Deal with it. I'm gruff. If you can't handle gruffness, then you, you won't make it in New York. Yeah, that's why I live in New Mexico. <laughs> and now that you live in New Mexico, I suggest you take a little edge off that gruffness. Because you don't want to turn people off to what God is trying to do in you and through you. We all have that. I mean, I have my areas of patience. Grocery store, you've heard me say the grocery store stories. When it comes to the grocery store, I got some work to do. I really do. I don't like waiting in line. And nothing, and it's even getting worse now that everywhere you go, it's self-checkout. It's like, number one, I'm paying for the groceries, and in that cost is a bag, and somebody putting that stuff in the bag for me. That's just the way it's been my whole life. I don't, maybe it changed, but I don't get paid to bag my own groceries. Somebody else is getting paid to do that. I know, I know. We'll, we'll, we'll move. Yep, all right, here we go. So we're all these things. So we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. This is Holy Spirit week 11. Yeah, yeah, 11. Yeah, yeah. Amen, yeah. yeah. You know, we have to get to know the Holy Spirit. Because God the Father, he created, he planned it all out. And we're going to talk about his son Jesus today like we have. But then he sent us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's the one right here helping us. Now, Jesus is interceding for us, the right hand of the Father, but he's up there. God's up there. Well, I don't know if it's up there. Wherever they are, they're there. They're not down there, but <laughs> anyway. So we, we, we came through Easter, and we had all these things happen, and some great services and everything, and Jesus rose for us. That's, what we, that's the backbone of everything we do, of forgiveness of sins. All. But guess what? What now? What now? Well, what now? Well, to know what now, you've got to go a little bit further back to before the resurrection, and we're going to start in Luke chapter 3, verse 21. And if you're able to, uh, please rise to your feet as we, we get ready to read God's word. Um, Luke chapter 3, verse 21. We're going to go 21 and 22. It's on the screen if you want to read it. We'll read it together off the screen, and then I have several interpretations that I'll read. So it says right, it says here, it says, one day when the crowds were being baptized, Jesus himself was baptized. Hmm, interesting. Jesus himself was baptized as he was praying, the heavens opened, and the Holy Spirit in bodily form descended on him like a dove, and a voice from heaven said, you are my dearly son, my dearly loved son, and you bring me great joy. Well, Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for the son that you love, that you sent him to die for us, Father, and that you sent your Holy Spirit not only in this instance, but then you sent your Holy Spirit to dwell among us, dwell in us, and to help us through everything that we go. So that the man of God can be fully mature and developed into the man that you've created us to be, or woman that you've created us to be. I call each and every person blessed in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, have your way in this service. Meet each and every one of us where we are. Speak to each and every one of us as we need to be spoken to. Answer the questions that we may have on the inside of us that only you through your Holy Spirit can answer through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Praise God, yeah. Give him a hand clap. Turn to, turn, turn to your partner and just say, devil's running from me. God's answering my prayers. You can be seated. 
Or you can stand the whole service, just stand in the back. So I'm going to read a couple more. Ver- I'm going to read the same scripture, several different verses. There are several versions. It says, one day, when all the people, this is the, new, the NIV, when all the people were being baptized, just sit there and listen. Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was open, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. The Message Bible says it like this. After all the people were baptized, Jesus was baptized. As he was praying, the sky opened up, and the Holy Spirit, like a dove descending, came down on him. And along with the Spirit, a voice said, You are my son, chosen, marked, and my love, pride of my life. The Amplified says it this way. Now when all the people were baptized, Jesus was also baptized. And while he was praying, the visible Heaven was open. Imagine that. The visible heaven was open. They saw heaven open. And they saw the Holy Spirit. And it says the heaven was open. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven that says, You are my son, my beloved. In you I am well pleased and delighted. That's what God was saying about his son. But I'm here to tell you, that's the same way your heavenly father thinks about you. You are well loved. He delights in you. Even when you don't feel like you should be loved or even when you feel like you're ashamed, he loves you and he delights in you. He wants to spend time with you. In you, he can be well pleased. It doesn't say because Jesus was perfect, he was well pleased. You know what's interesting about all these different uh, uh, versions? What did it say Jesus did after he was baptized? Or what, what what was he doing when he was about to be baptized? He was praying. It's just right there. Was baptized and he was praying. He was baptized. See, Jesus was baptized as he was praying. Jesus was baptized while he was praying. See, prayer is a big part of your life. Prayer is how you communicate to the Father and how the, how the Father communicates to you, but it's also how you invite the Holy Spirit, the helper, into your situations. See, you, in order to, to, to do the Word of God and to be, to be who God's created you to be, you've got to have the Word in three places. I say this all the time. You've got to have it in your heart, which is your spirit. You've got to have it in your head. And you've got to have it in your mouth. You've got to have it in all three. You've got to be believing the Word of God, knowing the Word of God, and speaking the Word of God into every situation. If you want to see God move, that's how you see God move. So he moves and he says, it was like a dove. Too many times we think the Holy Spirit, you know, Pastor Matt said this the first, he says this almost every week. The Holy Spirit is not an it. It's not a it. It's a person. And I'm here to tell you the Holy Spirit's not a dove either. It was like a dove. Too many times we think like the Holy Spirit's just, ooh, dove. Ooh, let me sit right here. Oh! You know, a bird, when they land somewhere, you go like that, shoot them. No. It was like a dove. That's the only thing they used to describe it, but that's an important word. Everything in the Bible is put there for a reason. This instance is one of my my favorite pictures in the New Testament in the Bible because it shows the the Trinity right there. You got God the Father, you got God the Son, and you got the Holy Spirit. The Trinity. May not understand it all the way, but I can see it. I don't know, I don't understand how electricity works, but I know when I hit the switch, it comes on. I don't know how wind turbines work and like that, but I know when they turn, they create power somehow, and power comes on. The Trinity, you see it right there. And that word where God said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased, loved, delighted in. And guess what? Had Jesus done anything yet? No. He hadn't even started his ministry. Guess what he had done for 30 years? Live life. Just like us. Live life. See? That moment was when he was answering the call. In that moment, he was saying, okay, God was saying, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased, Pastor Sean, because he's ready. I love him because he's my son. Some of you will be graduating here in the next few months, and your parents, they're going to be proud of you. But they love you because of who you are, and then they're proud of you because now you're ready for the next step. He was proud of his son because his son was answering the call and saying, look, here I am to fulfill the prophecy. I will be baptized, even though I don't need to be, but I'm going to be baptized, and the Holy Spirit's going to come. Well, I'm here to tell you, your heavenly Father, the day you answered the call, is very pleased with you. The day you put your hand up and you said, yes, God, come into my heart. Jesus, I need you. Forgive me. Your heavenly Father was well pleased the day you accepted the Holy Spirit and know that he dwells on the inside 
inside of you, know that your heavenly father is looking down on you and he's saying, Jimmy, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Not because of what you're doing, but because of whose you are and because of the decision you made. Jesus made that decision. He said, he's ready. And then what? Jesus started his ministry. And that's why we go back to there, because before he was just a carpenter. They don't say much about Jesus other than in Luke 2 where they lose him. They're like, oh, we forgot Jesus. Yeah, call CYFD because they left him in Jerusalem or wherever they left him. I don't know where they left him, but they left him. You know, put it on InstaTalk, Facegram. What is it? <laughs> Facegram, InstaTalk. I have them written down here because I have to do service. So, so. Oh, yeah, InstaBook. That's not it? InstaTweet? Oh, that's the one. FaceTube, whatever those are. All our social media things, go to commongroundabq.church, they're there. Got the website right. <laughs> See in the book of John, the word became flesh. This instant is so big, it's in, every, it's in every gospel. It's in Matthew 3, Mark 1, Luke 3, John 1. They all reference this instance. Before that, he was, imagine, do you think when he was a carpenter, he was in like... What? Praise God. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, there's been some things happened in my life where I knew something was different. And I knew something was different. I'd been saved probably two weeks, and, you know, I was living with my uncle at the time, and, and um, I had a bedroom, and there was a bathroom right next to the bedroom. And I woke up... Um, and, and this may happen in your life. The Holy Spirit or God will reveal things to you where it may not be big to other people, but to you it's like, now I know something is really different. And I did. I got out of bed one day, and I went, and it was about 3 in the morning, I had to use the restroom, and I turned the corner to go into the restroom, and whack! And I literally just went, praise God! And then I put my foot down, and I said, what did I just say? Because, you know, two, three weeks prior, it would have not been praise God, it would have been... It wouldn't have been that, I'll just say that. <laughs> so Jesus answered that call. And then he was baptized and the Holy Spirit came. And he told them, he tells us in 1 Peter, he says, you know, to be holy is I'm holy. This is what he's asking of us. This is what, what now, this is what we need to do. We need to continue. It's not the end. Easter's not the end. That's the beginning. <laughs> See, I, I've said this before. We're not working towards a miracle. We're working from a miracle, and the greatest miracle is Jesus Christ. Every other miracle pales in comparison to a Savior dying for the remission of everybody's sins, going to hell, conquering death, hell, and the grave, and then coming back and giving us his Holy Spirit. That's the biggest miracle of all. We're not working to a miracle. We're working from a miracle, and miracles just happen because of whose we are and what we do and what we believe, which is his word. So Jesus began his calling. He started to heal the sick, turn water into wine. All of that happened after he was baptized. And it's interesting, he tells the, the disciples, and we'll get there in a minute, that they would be endued with what? Power, when they have the Holy Spirit. Guess what? When did Jesus become endued with power? After the Holy Spirit came down and rested on him. He still went to the wedding, and then he's like, well, it's not my time, but I do have the Holy Spirit. Water to wine. Go ahead. See? And then he's going through his ministry. He's healing the sick, feeding the 5,000, casting devils out, healing the man with a withered hand. He did all these great things. And then in John chapter 16, he tells him something. He says, look, I'm going to send you a helper. Write these chapters down and go back and read them. He, he tells John chapter 16, he's telling his disciples, I'm going to send you a helper. It's better that I go. And they're like, no, no, don't leave us. He's like, no, no, it's better that I go because I'm going to send a helper. And when the helper comes, he's going to be the spirit of truth, and he's going to reveal all these things to you. And he's going to be able to be with you and be there for you. And then in Luke 23, verse 46, Jesus is on the cross, and he cries out, Father, into your hands I commit what? My spirit. And then he died. And three days later, he was raised from the dead. And then he goes in the book of Acts, verse 1, chapter, chapter 1, verse 8, and he says, Terry, when, when the Holy Spirit comes, you will receive what? Power. He says, for 40 days he was on the earth after the resurrection. 
He said, but when I come and you guys are tearing and waiting, not go to Terry's, but Terry's, he said, you're going to receive power, Sean, Pastor Sean. And that power is what's going to cause you to live the life God's created you to live. Not a perfect life. How many of you want your best days to be ahead? Today's good, but tomorrow is going to be even better. That's got to be something we live on the inside of us. Something we got to proclaim. Get up and say these things. Hear yourself say it. Get in your word and the Holy Spirit will reveal things to you. People say, well, you know, God really doesn't speak to me. Well, I'll tell you how you can get him to start speaking to you. Read your Bible. And ask the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to you because that's what he'll do. See, that's the interesting thing about the Bible. Just as I'm up here preaching, somebody over here is getting something out of it. Somebody over here is getting something out of it. Somebody back there is getting something. And if you put them all together, Pastor Matt, guess what? It'd all be different, but with a corporate message. Amen? Amen. Amen. So he was a carpenter and all those things. And we'll go for, for, for speed, for time's sake here. The dove, the dove represents, and I said he's not a dove, but they did use a dove because it represents something. Imagine if they would have said he was, what are those things we have at our, oh, Holy Spirit came down like a pigeon. <laughs> What'd you guys think? Pigeon? Okay. What, what if he came out of the wilderness, you know, because John the Baptist was in the wilderness, right? What if it said, oh, and then the Holy Spirit came out of the wilderness like cocaine bear. talking to somebody whose wife's a teacher, and he says, you'll never guess what my wife told me. And his wife tells him things because, I'm telling you what, we need Jesus. We need God. We need to be grounded and rooted in his word. Because I'm telling you, some of the things that I hear that go on in schools, we need help. And they need help. And they need us to be the church, which is not be the church is like, yeah, we're the church right now. We're all here. No, no, no. Be the church out there because the Holy Spirit, let me tell you this. The Holy Spirit isn't just for Sunday or isn't just for a night of worship. The Holy Spirit is for every day for you to be able to effectually live your life, but then to effectually pour into the lives of others. Not just by quoting them scripture, but by being there for them, letting them watch the way you walk like Jesus. So anyway, I'll get back to that story. So he said, yeah, he says, funniest thing, the little kids were playing, and they were playing like monsters and like that. He's like, and this little kid was running around saying, ah, I'm Cocaine Bear. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, he was the monster, and he was calling himself Cocaine. I said, that's a movie. He said, what's it about? I said, it's about a bear and cocaine. <laughs> Can't get any better than that. So anyway, that's a movie. I can't recommend it. Can't say you should watch it like that. I just know the little third grader was running around saying he was Cocaine Bear. So the significance of the dove it represents salvation, peace, purity, hope, transformation, compassion. And then in Acts 2, what is the Holy Spirit described as? A mighty rushing wind. How many of you know wind can do some damage? We've been having some bad winds around here, and how many of you know it can destroy some things? See? But wind, you can feel it. Sometimes, sometimes you can smell it, depending on what's upwind from you. We'll stop right there can't really touch it, but you feel it. That's what the Spirit of God is. It's like a wind. It can be very powerful. It can be very gentle. It can be very forceful. It can be a cooling effect. It can be a calming effect. It can be all these things. It is what you need it to be in that instance because he's a helper. But he is a gentleman. He won't make you. So Jesus lived. He died. Oh, look at that. There was the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Holy Spirit's like my tithe check. I still give a check. I know. I don't have the Insta app. What's it called? Insta app to do it. Right there, black box, that's all me. I think that, matter of fact, I think that's the only reason why they have the black box. Am I right, Pastor Matt? It's for my family? Because my family, we, what's that? There we go. See? Blessed, blessed, blessed. God's will, God's will, God's will, God's will. Oh, another one in God's will. Amen. The rest of you? Altar, come up, get saved. <laughs> so, I want to talk, as we're watching what Jesus did. See, we went back to that moment, because it was in that moment where it, it enabled God, Jesus, to live the life that God called him to live. That moment, he made a decision. That moment, he professed, like we're going to do here, it's an outward expression of an inside occurrence. And the Holy Spirit came. That's where we are. That's what now? 
That's where we are, right where he was, right there. And now it's time for us to live the life that God has called us to live. Because that's what Jesus did. Before, before that moment, he was just Jesus the carpenter with eh, maybe a story. Maybe people knew who he was. But look at the disciples. Just a fisherman. Before what? They followed Jesus. Just a tax collector before they followed Jesus. Just a doctor before they followed Jesus. Just a tent maker before an encounter with the Holy Spirit. And see, here's the thing. What did they do before they got filled with the Holy Spirit? They, they walked with Jesus. They knew. They heard him speak. Knew his words. The Holy Spirit had to come and reveal the words to them later on. They're like, ah. But what did they do? It's this word default. And this is why you need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will keep you from going back to your default. You know what your default is? What's your default? I'll say it this way. How many of you are like me that just think dancing is, the reason to dance is just to make other people laugh. You know what I mean? That's why people dance. You know? And the older you get, you, you may still think, and Dom's not here, I would, I would say Dom one day. This became very clear to me one day he tried to break dance in youth. And we've, we've, we saw it very soon, like, that passed you by years ago. <laughs> like, I, I'm sure at one time, but see, as you get older, the only reason to dance is to either make others laugh or just to, to make yourself laugh. But everybody's got a default, right? What's, what's the dancing default? You know, if you're, if you're like me, you know, gangsters don't dance, we boogie, we just... You know, just kind of... I'm dancing, but I'm ready. <laughs> you didn't know that's why they dance like that? I can say that, because that's how I was like, yep, I'm ready. Anything happens, close proximity, ready to go. So you can't, if I'm over here doing all this other stuff, I might knock myself out. <laughs> so that's my default. You know, what's most people's default? A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, standing out there doing this, yeah. Other countries? No, that's their default? I don't know. Yeah. What's your default when times get hard? Hmm? What's your default when you argue with your husband or your wife? Do you get mad? Do you yell? Do you storm out of the room, slam the door? What's your default when times get hard? Do you get quiet? Internalize everything? What's your default? See, your default is where you automatically go back to when things don't go your way. What's your default in church, Pastor Matt? He's not going to listen to me. I'll quit going. What's your default? Do you stop reading your word when times get hard? Do you stop fellowshipping with those who are put in place to help guide you and help strengthen you? When you need strength the most, is your default to pull away and say, I don't want to be around anybody? I'll handle this by myself. You know, we talk as elders and as pastors, and we pray for you guys, and we talk, not about you guys, but we talk about you guys. You know, how was so-and-so? We haven't seen him in a couple weeks. We need to pray for him. I've been praying. This family keeps coming on my heart. Right? These are things your pastors do and, and your servant leaders do behind the scenes. You know, and, and you know, we haven't seen brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so in a while. Well, you know, Pastor Matt, they're just going through some things, so they'll be back once they get it right. That's the default. See, the church is where you need to be. You need to change that default and say, no, no, no. When I wake up and I don't want to praise, the last thing I want to do is lift my hands. Guess what? That's your flesh default. you got to say, I'm going to lift my hands whether I feel like it or not. And let the Holy Spirit work in you. I just don't, you know, I don't, you know, we're going through some financial troubles. I, I just can't give right now, Pastor Matt. You know, but, but once we get all that squared away, Pastor Matt, when I win the lottery... First check I'm right is going to be to the church, Pastor Matt. We, yeah, we've heard that before. Yeah. Build you a building, Pastor Matt. Just let me, let me go play this scratcher, okay? What's your default? Where'd you get your default from? Did you get your default from your mom? Did you get your default from your daddy? Do you react the way you did because your dad or your mom or you saw somebody? Or do you react the way you do because you didn't have a dad? Or maybe you had a dad and it wasn't the dad that you wanted or the dad that you felt it should be. In those cases, you have a heavenly father. And I'm telling you, parents, tell your kids you're proud of them. 
what, what God just said to his son, you should make that a prayer for your children. You are my son. You're my daughter whom I love. In you, I'm well pleased. Too many times all we do is talk about the wrong they do. The enemy wants to keep you from fulfilling God's will in your life, so he's going to draw you back to your default. Don't disappear from church when things happen. Don't disappear from church when times get hard. Run to God, not from God. Too many times that's, that's the answer, the default. We all have defaults, and the only way you start to change those defaults is to recognize them and let the Holy Spirit work. Ask the Holy Spirit. Yeah, this last two weeks I've been watching these five-minute videos on patience. Why? Because I know I need it. My default, not patient. If there's traffic, I'm zooming through other neighborhoods, breaking the law, going 35 in a 20 <laughs> through a neighborhood. I know. I, hey, I said, I, I, let, let him who was without su- sin keep his hands down. <laughs> Y'all are a bunch of liars. Put your hands up. The Holy Spirit will help you change your defaults. You got to have it this way. See, we're all, just like we talked about the the Trinity, we're all three things. We're a spirit, we have a soul, and in your soul you have your emotions, is in there, and you have a body, flesh. Spirit, soul, body. You got to make it to where your spirit is king. Your soul is your servant. It serves at behest of your spirit. And your flesh is a slave. The Apostle Paul said it that way. My flesh is a slave. I let it do. I make it do whatever I want it to do. See, too many times our default, because we have been born in a country where we're blessed, and we can get anything we want, when we want, how we want, or else I'm going to yell at you and throw it back at you, and you better make it right, and then give it to me anyway, because you already made it. Right? Too many times... As, as, as people, we live this way. Our flesh is king. Our soul is servant. Whatever our flesh wants, our soul is going to try and get. And our spirit is a slave. It just lives down in there. It's our little slave. Or they live, your soul is king. Your flesh is your servant. Your spirit is still a slave. Only one way. Your spirit has to be king. Got to be filled with the Spirit. So, so that's what Jesus did. The Spirit came and he lived his life the way God created him to be. So say this with me. These are declarations that you should say all the time. We used to say these when I was in Bible school every morning. <laughs> We'd say this. And they're scary because once you start saying them, guess what? God requires something from you. Once you start asking for his will and asking for what he wants you to do. So number one, just say this. Say, I want to be who God's called me to be. I'm going to do what God calls me to do. I'm going to reach those who God's called me to reach. And no matter who it takes me from, go ahead, no matter who it takes me from or who it puts me with, I'm going to serve God. Amen? Three things. Number one, and we'll go quickly. You got to be who God created you to be. You want to be the husband God created you to be. You want to be the wife God created you to be. You want to be the child God created you to be. You want to be the employee that God created you to be. How? Look, following Jesus' example, what did Jesus say? He said this in, in uh, John 14, 6. He said, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. See, Jesus knew who God created him to be. That's why he could make that statement. And I'm here to tell you, you know who God has created you to be. You say, I don't know exactly what that means. It means he's called you first and foremost to be a son and a daughter. So start treating the relationship from that aspect. Then start saying, okay, I know what that means to be a son or a daughter. I need to be obedient. Just like we opened up saying, obey diligently obey what God has called you to do, and guess what? The other steps will become easier. You want to be a godly husband? First be a godly son. To who? To him. You want to be a godly wife? Be a godly daughter to him. Let him tell you who you need to be. And and like I said, that word obey probably, now it just gets added into you'll obey him, not she obeys me and I obey her. Be who God. Jesus knew who he was. 
We are who God says we are. That's who we are. And the problem is we have an identity problem because of one thing. We don't really know who God says we are. We go back to our default. Well, you know, I've been told I was stupid my whole life. I guess I'm just stupid. No, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says you have the mind of Christ. And that if you renew your mind, everything else will follow. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, we got a default. I think about it this way, defaults. Anybody type on Word? I hate, I I don't hate, well, yeah, I hate it. Because it always goes to Arial. The default, I start typing, I'm like, ugh, I don't like Arial. I got some Calibri over here. Some italics. Yeah, that's what I want to, you know. Number, Number two, you got to do what God called you to do. You got to be who God's called you to be. You got to be who God's called you to be before you can do what He's called you to do. See, Jesus knew I'm the Son of God. That's who I am. That's my dad. And now I got to do what He's called me to do. He came up out of that water and the Holy Spirit came. And guess what? God said, I'm pleased because He's ready to go and do the work. Well, your Heavenly Father is pleased and He's pleased that you're here this morning. And nothing pleases your Heavenly Father more than when you do his will. Amen? Luke 4, 18 through 19. We say, what, is, what am I supposed to do? This. Just like Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And I'm telling you, if you're called to do this, then this has already been done for you. He, the Spirit of the Lord is already upon you. It's in you. He's anointed you to preach the gospel. You're already free because of what he's did, so you can set other captives free. You have been set apart. Your eyes have been opened to the gospel. That's recovery of sight. So I'm not blind. Some areas we are pretty blind. It's like, you know, I don't see it, so it's not happening. Right? That's who you're supposed to be. Just walk it out with him. The Apostle Paul was continually seeking God and God's will. And he knew who he was. Notice in Paul's letters, he always opens up his letters. And what does he say? I, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. He knew who he was. I, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. He was always saying, I know who I am, and I know whose I am. Well, I just don't feel like, well, it's not about what you feel. It's about the truth. And you say the truth long enough, guess what? You will eventually start believing it. But you listen to a lie long enough, and guess what? Start believing it too. Eh, You're just an usher at church. They don't really need you there. Oh, no, no, we need you here. Well, you know, you just work the cafe. Good. We need that. Well, I'm afraid if I, 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 uh, you know, submit to God, he's going to put me up on stage. Let me tell you this. If he hadn't told you you're going on stage yet, you're probably not going on stage, so don't use that excuse. (laughs) Pastor Matt, I don't want to get caught up and be up there. I, I just can't. Okay, but you can do other things. He's called you for other things. We're one body, and he's the head. And just like my toe story, get it, toe story, oh, where I said, praise God, even when my little toe gets jammed, guess what? The whole body felt it. We feel it when you're not here. We feel it when we don't see you. Why? Because he's called us to be a corporate body. See, Jesus got baptized, and he was getting ready to start his ministry, and what's the first thing he did, Pastor Matt? Went and got 12 friends. We ain't got a, what do we call them now? Not calm groups anymore? <laughs> small groups. We went and got him a small group. And he fellowshiped and he poured into them and he taught them and he trained them. And then when he left, what'd they do? They went back. But what separated them to move forward? They went back to their default. Some of them went fishing. The two disciples that were going to Emmaus, they were leaving. They're like, well, Jesus died. Not remembering he said he would raise again. They were already on their way back. Seven-day trip. They were like, well, we're out of here. The two ladies, they were like, well, he's dead. Let's go dress him up. They weren't saying he's going to come back. No, they default. 
back to what they were doing. And that's why he came for 40 days and he started appearing to them. He started saying, I'm here. I'm alive. Come on back. You don't need to fish. Come on. And then he said, go and tarry because I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, which is going to give you the power to change your defaults. You have the power to change your defaults with the help of the Holy Spirit in his word. Amen. The third thing, we'll close with this. Reach those who God has called you to reach. In Colossians, the Apostle Paul writes it this way, and I think this sums up all three. So Colossians 1, 9 through 11, the King James says it this way. For this reason, we also, we, this is the Apostle Paul talking about the, the people in the, the church at Colossians. He said, for this reason, we also, since the day we heard, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That's the prayer, and that should be the cry of our heart, that we are filled with the knowledge of his will in our lives. And his will in our lives is going to look different because why? We're all in different places. Some of us work. Some of us don't work. Some of us are teachers. Some of us aren't. Some of us work in the church. But to be filled with the knowledge of him because he brings it all together, that you may walk worthy of the Lord. Walk worthy of the Lord. Fully, what? Pleasing him. What did he tell his son? This is my son in whom I'm well. What? Pleased. He didn't say this is, you guys will be perfect. No. We can please him being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. See, we need so much knowledge. Knowledge of his will and increasing in the knowledge of him. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience, long suffering with joy. Reach who God's called you to reach. In the church, there are people in this body, in this family, that need you, and you need them. And there are people out there that need you, and you need them. Amen? Amen. Be who God's called you to be. Say it. I want to be who God's called me to be. I'm going to do what God's called me to do. And I'm going to reach those he's called for me to reach. I'm going to ask you to stand... As I read, if you're able to, just stand. I'm going to read Ephesians 3, 16 to you guys, over you guys. And then we're going to end in worship. And the song we're going to be singing at the end, it's just saying thank you. And I don't think we can say that enough. We can't say thank you enough to our Heavenly Father. We have so much to be thankful for. And we have so much to do as a body. But we can be thankful that we have the ability. And the Apostle Paul says this, and this is a prayer that, that, that I pray all the time, and it's a prayer that we pray over people. And it's just a prayer, it's a good prayer to pray for yourself, just like that Colossians prayer, that you be filled with the knowledge of His will in all spiritual understanding. That you may be filled with the knowledge of God. But in Ephesians, the Apostle Paul writes this. He's talking about them, he's saying, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. I pray this for you, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might, to be strengthened with might through his spirit, through his spirit in the inner man. I pray that you all continue to be strengthened with might through his spirit in your inner man and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, length, depth, and height to know the love of Christ which passes all understanding. Father, we thank you that we're filled with the knowledge of you, Father, and that we're continually filled in our spirit by your precious Holy Spirit, that we are strong in our inner man, Father, that we know what you've called us to do. And Father, I thank you that even now we're just open to you speaking to us. And Father, we know the Holy Spirit is for today, but it's for every day, Father. We thank you that we want to be who you've created us to be. We want to do what you've called us to do. And we want to touch those who you've called us to touch. And we want to fellowship with those who you've called us to be in fellowship with, Father. I thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. We thank you for your Son, the Holy Spirit, and your Word. In Jesus' name, amen.